In this video, we're going to be tying the Gypsy King dry fly. We're going to start off with a Daiichi 1280 hook and a number 6 and some black Vivas 6 aught thread. Next, we're going to tie in some small or extra small copper wire. We're just going to tie it all the way down the length of the shank of the hook. And you're ready for the body material. For this, we're just going to use a nice generous clump of peacock curl. I'd say there's probably a dozen to 20 strands in there. Nice big clump for this larger size dry fly. If you're tying a smaller one, then you can use fewer strands. And we're going to twist it into a little rope. And we're just going to work it up the body of the fly. And when you're tying a larger size like this in a number six, most likely you're not going to have enough peacock curl to make it all the way to the front of the fly. Don't worry about it too much. Just when you get to the point where you run out, you can just tie it off, tie in another clump. Here I ran out a little bit, so just tie it off. Get yourself another clump here and just tie it in. Now if you build a little bit more bulk towards the head of the fly, you're kind of building a thorax. That's actually perfectly fine. I think it actually helps enhance the look of the fly a little bit. Most bugs you see, they're a little bulkier by the thorax than they are back down by the tail. Once you get to the eye, just tie it off. Now we're going to take that small copper wire and we're going to counter wrap it the opposite way that we wrap the peacock hurl. That will just help lock all those peacock hurl fibers in place and keep the fly from falling apart. Next, we're going to tie in the body. Now we're going to take our thread back a quarter of the way back from the eye of the hook, leaving three quarters of the body exposed. We're going to take a piece of two millimeter brown foam, about the width of the gap of the hook, and I like to tie the, the back tail of it, or cut the back tail of it kind of in a little pointed shape. And you want it just to hang off the back end of the hook just slightly. Now take a few wraps underneath the foam too. That'll help keep it from rolling on you when you're tying in more materials. So next we're going to tie in some crystal flash. We're going to use a pearl color. Just three or four strands will do it, and I usually like to double it up. I just wrap it around my thread and then tie it in. That'll give you six to eight strands total on the wing of the fly. Leave them nice and long for now. That way they kind of stay out of the way. Now we're ready for our wing. And for that, you can either use deer hair or elk hair. Both work just fine. You want it to overhang past the, the foam body just a little bit. I like to measure and then trim it before I tie it in rather than tie them all in long and make kind of a big mess but that's just my preference you can do it either way so I just trim them to length and I take some nice loose wraps of thread just to kind of capture it sometimes I gotta trim it a little bit more blunt just to get all the fibers to lay the way I want them to 
delay. There we go. And a loose wrap of thread. And you can bite down with it. I like to wrap through the deer hair butt ends. That also keeps that deer hair from rolling on you. And again, just take a wrap or two underneath the bottom of the fly. That'll help secure it to the shank and keep it from rolling as well. Then you can trim out as many of those little butt ends as you can. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just want somewhat of a nice, smooth, even base for you to tie onto. And you can just clean them up a little bit. Now we're ready for the legs. We're going to be using some brown, medium-sized, round rubber legs. And uh, I like to tie them in when they are together. So instead of splitting them and tying them in one by one, leave them together. And tie them in on each side. You want the legs to sit just next to the foam. Just slightly below and next to the foam. You'll be able to see it on this side a little better. There you go. And lash those down nice and tight. Now once you have them lashed down, you can still actually adjust them. I like them, the front legs to point slightly down and forward and the back legs to be slightly up. But that's just my personal preference. Now we're ready for the hackle. I like my hackle to be slightly oversized for this fly. I like the fibers to hang down past the bend of the hook. And I'm using a Grizzly Rooster Saddle Feather. Now the saddle feathers will be a little bit longer, so they're a little easier to work with on these larger flies. But if you just have a cape, cape works just fine. Uh, you're just going to have a little bit shorter feather and not quite as many longer fibers uh, to work with. So if you have a saddle, that's probably the best for this fly. And we're just going to take several wraps here. Now if you're fishing more broken water, faster water, you can build up more hackle on this fly. If you're fishing some softer water, a little slower, then you can just do a handful of wraps or so. So it's just kind of personal preference. You can make it bulkier or slimmer depending on the type of water that you're fishing. We're just going to capture the end of that hackle and trim it out. Then we're going to jump our thread up towards the eye of the hook. I have to pull everybody out of the way and just jump it forward to the eye. Now we're ready to build our head. All you're going to do is just pull the foam forward, all the legs out of the way, capture the foam, loose wrap, and then just cinch down on the foam to build a little nice clean head. Then you're ready to just tie it off underneath the foam right up by the eye. A little tricky to whip finish on this fly because you got to kind of get all the legs and foam out of the way. And after that, you pretty much have a finished fly. You've just got to trim the foam. I pull the foam tight, just give it a trim, just a couple millimeters hanging off the end. And you can split the legs. It's easiest done with a little needle. 
or the tips of your scissors. It can be a little finicky. It's easiest to pull it tight and then just use your finger to kind of, kind of as a backstop to lightly push the tip of your scissors through. Make sure you split the legs all the way back to the body of the fly too. And you can trim the legs to length. I like the front legs to be shorter than the back leg. The front legs should be shorter than the back legs. So just trim those so they overhang past the head of the fly, about a half an inch or so. And the back legs I like to be just slightly longer in the body, about the length of the foam. A lot of that's personal preference. If you like a leggier fly, you can make them longer. If you like them shorter, you can trim them shorter. That is essentially a finished Gypsy King.